Welcome back to WTF. It's the show that aims to take a deep dive into some of the acts playing across festival season 2020. In today's episode, we're looking at the wonderful Fickle Friends. They're a, I don't know, what do you call them, like indie pop? Like pop, probably, yeah. Indie pop band based out of Brighton. If you've never heard of them before, hopefully this video will help answer the question, who the f are Fickle Friends? Natasha, with a J, Jack, Harry, and Sam are the four members that make up Fickle Friends. Indie pop, synth pop. They're like a less dark version of Churches. A bit like that. Kind of synthy. I'd say they're a bit more guitar-y as well. If I was gonna have to compare them, they're like the perfect blend of the 1975 Bombay Bicycle Club. and Tudor Cinema Club. If you like those bands, Fickle Friends are for you. They formed in 2013. In the same year, they entered a competition to play at Jamie Oliver's Big Festival and won. Following their set, they, they, they talk about just going and getting really pissed and enjoying the show. Following that, they literally received a phone call from Jamie Oliver while, they, while one of them sat in bed. And he said, he phoned me up a week later. I was in bed. He said he wanted to pay for us to go and record a couple of songs with an actual producer. What a legend. What a legend indeed. Not only can he cook the shit out of some good food, he'll also pay for artists to go and get recorded. I love that. Nice one, Jamie Oliver. They first released their record Swim in 2014. Hey, it's also their most popular record on 907,000 views on YouTube. This was followed up with, by Tracks Play. and for you. In 2015, they released their first EP, Velvet, which featured the record, Could Be Wrong. And this was the first time I came across them. Well, I, I didn't, Lauren did. She was a big fan of Fickle Friends. I was like, meh, whatever. The band toured the UK and Europe without a label, or publishing and played a whopping 53 festival slots over two years before signing with Polydor. They did all of that before the record label. And Polydor, Polydor is a massive subsidiary of Universal. If you've never come across them, then you haven't watched any of these videos before. They include, other artists on Polydor include Blink-182, D'Antvord, The Cortinas, Dr. Dre, Billie Eilish, many, 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 many more. It's like the biggest subsidiary of all of them. Maybe EMI, I don't know. It's huge. They mark the occasion by re-releasing Swim, which was followed up by the record Cry Baby. And the next single was the absolute breakout smash that is Brooklyn. You are someone else. It's something I get to find. You are not mine. That's the record that I always think about when I think about Fickle Friends. This was the first single taken from their upcoming debut album, You Are Someone Else. You Are Someone Else is also the words of the song. Other singles on this album include Hello Hello, Glue, Hard To Be By Myself, Heartbroken, and another third time re-release of Swim. The album was scored four stars out of five with The Enemy, making it to number nine in the UK albums chart and being accompanied by an eight day UK tour. In 2018, they went on to launch their own record label, Palmyra, Palmyra, Pal? Palmyra Music, which means palm tree in Portuguese. In an interview with the enemy at Reading Festival 2018, they described the disdain for being held back by a major record company, for wanting to progress and do things a certain way and being told no for no reason. And I really respect this, to go from having such support from a major label and then going, you know what, no, I don't like the way this works. We used to do this, we did so much work before for this and then went and decided to do something on our own. You're saying no. Get rid of the gatekeeper. It's 2020. You don't need them. They kicked off their record label with the song Broken Sleep. Broken sleep. When I wake up and you're not next to me. This was also co-written or certainly helped by Preston of the Ordinary Boys, a band that I used to absolutely love. Last year they followed this up with the single Amateurs. We don't know which was co-released with Cooking Vinyl. Cooking Vinyl is an independent record label based in Acton, London. Alumni include The Prodigy, Marilyn Manson, 
Pulp and Roll Deep, the coolest. And that was followed up with their latest single, Pretty Great. Which was released in uh, January, I think? Released in start January, end January? Which is also a collaboration with Cooking Vinyl. This is their fourth time playing Reading and Leeds. Their first time was in 2016 when they opened the R1 stage on the Friday at Reading, Saturday at Leeds. Uh, I wasn't there, Lauren did go and see that set. I went to go see Swimmers with Smokey. Next was in 2017 when again they played the Radio 1 stage. This time slightly higher, in between SG Lewis and Mute Math. I'm pretty sure I was there for that. And they then played again in 2018 following Bring Me The Horizon secret set and before Maggie Rogers. I remember watching that. And this time they're back to support JPEG Mafia on the Festival Republic stage, so they're sub-headlining. And this feels a little bit like a demotion. And the only thing that's new about them is that they don't have the backing of a major record company. I could be wrong, and this could be a massive conspiracy, but that's what it feels like. It feels like this band has worked really hard and now they've gone, do you know what? We don't want anything to do with the major, and now they've been put down to the little stage. I, I don't know how real that is. That's just, I guess it's possible, but, but yeah, that's that's how it feels. I think they're a really cool band. As like indie pop goes, they're not my favorite. Like I'm not obsessed with them. Uh, I think that they've got a really cool sound. I think they seem like really cool people in interviews. Their record label sounds like they want to just hustle and make good music and not let people get in the way. I always have time for people like that. And now that they're an indie, I kind of feel like I should support them more. So if no one's clashing, then I'm absolutely going to go check them out. Absolutely. If they're clashing, no, then, uh, you know, I, like it's not one of those or one of those. It's just, it's a one of those. What do you think? Have you seen Fickle Friends before? Are you a big fan of them? I guess, like, if you're a fan of any indie and you like 1975, like half of this audience does, then you're going to love Fickle Friends. I think they're really cool. I'd love to know what you have to say. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.